If you don't have the skills, they don't want you. Yeah, you can't be at a fourteen to twenty thousand dollars worth of free certifications. Yeah, why not, right? So if you don't have that foundational knowledge, it's gonna suck. Junior pen testing roles are tough to find because. Yo, what is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to give you guys a complete roadmap to become an ethical hacker in 2025. In this video, I sit down with my colleague and my mentor, Michael Small. He has over 10 years of experience in the industry with a background in penetration testing, blue teaming, purple teaming, and also malware analysis. He has a lot of knowledge and insight to share with you guys, so make sure you watch until the end. If you want to connect with Mike, I'll leave all of his information down in the description box below. Also, if you're new to the channel, my name is Ben and I make videos every single single week just like this one so make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss out and also be sure to like the video if you guys find it helpful with that being said let's go ahead and get right into the video enjoy hey mike thanks for hopping back on the channel our last video ranking certifications tier list did really well a lot of my subscribers the comment section asking for an ethical hacker roadmap so i thought i'd bring you back onto the the channel pretty much have your insight on what exactly you would do if you had to restart your career from scratch and you wanted to become an ethical hacker. So thanks for coming back on, Mike. Yeah, yeah, happy to be here. Always happy to answer questions. I, I wore my special shirt with a recipe for being a successful hacker today. It says, uh, eat, sleep, hack. That, that's how you do it. That's done. The video's over, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's get into it, Mike. We're starting from scratch. We have no background experience in hacking. Where would you start from day one? First of all, let me back up for a second and talk about the things I look at when I'm planning out a career path. Pretty much what I did in the beginning where I look at things that are good for the resume. I look at things that are good for skills and my understanding, right? So a lot of times they're not the same. And sometimes you get more like one's weighted more than the other. So this list is going to kind of hit both areas and kind of go back and forth so that you're developing what you need to do to get those interviews, develop what you need to do to pass those interviews because they're two different things, right? Some things catch their eye like CEH, not to throw uh, <laughs> people under the bus. Like it, it used to be fodder for HR. It's not as much anymore, but it didn't really teach you a lot of skills either. So it's one of those things that's good for the resume not so good for the skills. So the beginning, first thing I would do to bring it back for you, first thing I would do is SEC plus. The reason I like this certification, it's great for the resume and great for foundational knowledge, right? You haven't done anything in tech, don't know anything about cybersecurity. This lays the foundations, teaches you a little bit about everything. And bonus, it's on tons of job listings as well. Probably one of the heaviest hitters in that arena. Uh, one question I did have, Mike, is have you noticed that with like penetration testing roles and ethical hacking roles, you can have certifications and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, when it comes to interviews, you need to know what you're doing kind of day one, really, right? Like you can't just have these certifications and expect to land the role just because you have them. You got to know what you're doing from the interview process. It's even more so in a pen testing role than other roles, I believe, because there is such a breadth of knowledge you need to be an effective pen tester. If you don't have it, you can't do anything. You're going to be sitting there wasting your mentor's time because he's or she's going to have to teach you everything. You have to have the foundations. And they want to know that you understand the attack chain, like what it is, the different pieces, the tools you have available, tools as in techniques that you have available to progress through the attack chain. And if you don't, I'm going to say, hey, Ben, go hack this company. You have a laptop, a rogue device inside the network. Go hack it. And you're like, um, sure. And then that, you find nothing. And just to explain, benefits of a pen test, you're helping them find real holes that an adversary would abuse to uh, harm an organization. The more tricks you have in your tool belt, the better of a pen tester you are because you can adapt to various situations. So the only thing that differentiates a junior pen tester from a senior one is the amount of tricks they know. That's it. So the whole journey that we'll be talking about today is how do you add more tricks to your tool belt so that you can adapt to more circumstances? Um, so now at this point, we have the security plus under our belt. So we have a sort of a basic foundational understanding of different cybersecurity concepts, different types of attacks and things of that sort. So now after we get that, what, what are we doing next? 
at this point, we're looking to get some job experience. I think job experience is fantastic for this, even if it's not a pen testing role. We're just looking for any type of IT. Maybe you're probably not going to get that with a sec plus, but you may be able to get like a junior security role somewhere, maybe through college if you're in college currently. If not, you may just be able to get more junior infosec role, perhaps. I would start looking. Don't spend a ton of time. A lot of people will spend like six or seven hours a day looking for a job. The point is to kind of passively look and maybe get some of the skills as you build into a pen test role. So start looking for a job of some sort to get that real life experience. One of my favorite roles for this, which I went to first, was a SOC analyst role. And I like that role because you get to see all these other different types of attacks out there. You get experience with infrastructure of organizations and understanding of the security tools you'll have to start working around when you do become a pen tester. So you get exposed to so much so fast. It's, it's such a perfect spot to just start building up that foundational knowledge that you'll use to become an even better pen tester in the future. So the next step would be just getting any sort of professional experience to add to your resume and get some good experience under your belt. Yep. And again, it's just kind of a passive. Get it if you can get it. It may not be possible. The market's so competitive right now, but just look kind of passively apply if something is perfectly matches. Junior is what you're looking for. Don't waste time applying for <laughs> these more experienced ones like a lot of people do. Do you find value in like IT roles? Like if they can't land a cybersecurity internship or an entry level job, do you still find value if you were able to land an IT job or internship? Oh, yeah. Um, and the reason why is because we spend so much of our time pen testing, troubleshooting stuff. So you have to become a good troubleshooter to become a good pen tester. And you learn that with those IT roles. Hey, fix this printer, fix this computer, this program keeps crashing. These are all skills you're just getting intimately familiar with operating systems, just appliances that are out in company networks that you are looking to abuse in the future. Sounds good. So we have the Security Plus. We may have an internship. Uh, what are we doing next after those two? All right, next, this is a if you qualify moment. So I don't know uh, if a lot of your listeners know, but SANS Institute has tons of scholarships for certifications. And they're called, I think, SANS Academies. But there are four specific groups of people. So veterans, women, and then minorities, they can um, apply for these and they usually get at least two free certifications. And this is huge win because they're typically about seven grand to pop. The veterans program, and I got three free certifications. I did the GSEC, GCIH, and then GWAPT, basic security plus type stuff. GCIH is incident handler and then web app pen testing. Those are the ones I had. So I got the first two and I landed my job and then I finished the third one um, while it was working. Gotcha. Okay. That sounds like a really good opportunity. Yeah. You can't be at a 14 to $20,000 worth of free certifications. Yeah. Why not? Right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what are we doing after, after those, um, that little scholarship and the, the SANS Institute? I'd recommend you check out Heath and TCM Academy. And the reason why is they have a fantastic amount of knowledge in these things. They're not well known yet. They're not going to be heavy hitters in the resume area, but you're learning a lot of information really cheap. And the programs are pretty well done. Heath and his crew, they're just fantastic. He has a bunch of them. Um, I have them here. So stuff like only pen test specific ones. So advanced web hacking is the first one up here. External pen test playbook. The Linux ones wouldn't be bad to do because we work in a lot of Linux environments. I would skip the mobile pen testing stuff. You don't really need to know that unless you choose to go into that arena. OSINT stuff for sure. API, practical ethical hacking, stuff like that I would target. So web app stuff, normal network, pen test stuff, OSINT. Those are all things that are a big part of your job as a pen tester. You won't spend a ton of money like you would if you were just going full SANS or full OFSEC Academy those types of things, this is going to save you a ton of money and get you the knowledge that you need. Alternatives, if you prefer, you could do Hack the Box or try Hack Me in this stage as well. I think you'll get roughly the same level of information, same level of hands-on skills. That's what we're shooting for here is building that strong foundation, getting your hands dirty, understanding the, the attack chain, start understanding that and start putting tools in your tool belt, essentially. So this is like part of TCM Academy, you said? Yeah, TCM Academy is the one I would recommend. There's a couple of certifications in that pathway as well. And the cool thing that I like about their certifications is you do have to write a report, which is that is their least favorite part of a pen test. <laughs> 
And uh, you also have to present your report. So you have to present your findings as part of your certification, which is 100% realistic. That's called a debriefing. And that is 100% part of what we do as pen test. Report on it and then tell them what you found. So this is definitely getting to the point of the roadmap where we're getting really those hands-on skills, the real life experiences in order to eventually land an entry-level job down the line. So now that we have some foundational cybersecurity concepts under our belt, maybe some professional experience through internships or an entry-level job, and on top of that, maybe some more advanced level certifications through the SANS Institute, along with some hands-on experience with the TCM Academy. What are we doing after those things? If you've gotten those certifications and finished all those courses with TCM, I would start switch my gears, if you haven't already, to looking at junior pen testing roles. Well, you probably will start qualifying for them at this point, but you won't be super competitive. Again, TCM is in a huge thing, but you may find a company that's pretty open to these other certifications and like, okay, he's done a ton of work here. Looks like they're really putting in that effort. Let's give him a shot. Let's talk to him. But I would start kind of looking around because they, they are few and far between. I will tell you that junior pen testing roles are tough to find because you don't want someone that's not ready going into a client's environment and jacking stuff up. So you really want to get the right person in that role, someone who can make good decisions and who has enough knowledge to avoid making a catastrophe somewhere. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> and then after this, we're going to be continuing to add, add more tools. So I will say most pen testing roles, you will be very competitive for if you have an OSCP, which is the next step. Mm -hmm. Start doing that. And the reason why I put that last is because there's not a lot of handholding at all. Uh, and you will just, if you say, hey, my stuff's broken or whatever, they're try harder. That's what they're famous for. And that's why they get a lot of pushback on social media because they're not handholding. They are pretty much figure it out. This is what you do as a pen tester. You figure stuff out, stuff breaks, deal with it. And to be honest, that's one of the reasons why I like it is because you stuff breaks all the time. We probably spend 50% of our time fixing things that break. So we want to build up all those skills you need to be able to troubleshoot and understand the training that you're getting there. It's starting all the way up here. So if you don't have that foundational knowledge, it's going to suck. So would you say, you know, after they get their OSCP certification, they're in pretty good state to start really being competitive for those full-time jobs? And the reason why is because if you can pass that exam, you have your skills down on lock, you understand the attack chain because you have 24 hours to take over a network. Mm. That's a pretty thin margin for error. So if you don't have all your techniques, you don't know how to use your tools well, it's not happening. You're not going to pass that exam. I promise. Gotcha. Uh, it is very tight. That's why I like it. That's one of my reasons. If I started hiring pen testers, I would look for that. I would not hire without that. So after the OSCP, at this point, we're just continuing to refine our skills. So continuing to maybe self-study or continue to get maybe other certifications and things of that sort while continuing to apply for different roles. Yeah, it really becomes fine tuning uh, your skill sets because what you'll find in the job market, a lot of companies actually give you a CTF to complete whenever you apply for a job. And that's because this is an insanely skill based role. If you don't have the skills, they don't want you in the story. And so that's what they're looking for. So you need to refine these so that whenever you come up to this or you have to answer questions, you understand the concepts, you can explain them, you can walk through your methodology, you can knock out the CTF, you can write a report because part of that CTF is usually a small abbreviated report you have to write. They're utilizing those skills you're learning on this pathway in order to judge you, to make sure you know what you're talking about. Let's say on their journey of applying for jobs and looking for full-time opportunities, what are some other things they could do to, all, to also make money, but also build up their skills? Yeah, great question. So there's a couple of great programs out there. At one specific area, if you really gravitated towards web app pen testing, you could do bug bounties. Those are pretty much on the job experience. If you have a couple of bounties to your name while you're applying jobs, that looks amazing. Because that obviously shows you know what you're doing. You know you have a methodology if you can find bounties that someone else hasn't found out there. That's a that's a good feather in your cap. Other programs, Synac, um, to do a call out to a company, they have kind of like a CTF type thing where people can apply and become pen testers. So they have like this weird pen testing platform where you can, um, they say, hey, we have a pen test. We have these things we need to check and people can sign up uh, to do that specific task. So it's like task driven pen test. You just sign up for and then you place really well and then I'll send an invite to be a member of their little red team. 
So look out for bug bounties as well during your job search. What else do you got, Mike? Is that pretty much it for the roadmap or anything else you wanted to add? Other than that, I would say pen testing is a really competitive space and it does take a certain mindset. So almost every good pen tester you'll come across, this is what they live for. This is what they do. They're constantly playing around in their labs, constantly reading the news about new exploits, new things. They're always tinkering. You can't say that about like sock analysts work. Most of them, they go in there and do it like, ah, I'm over this. I'm done. I'm going to go drink or something. <laughs> um, but pen testers, they'll stop pen testing and then they'll go do a CTF or start working on their own research or writing a new tool. So it's just something to think about. These people, they're just different. And other things your audience can do to improve their skills, you have Hack the Box, which is a fantastic place to keep getting skills and fine tuning your craft. Try Hack Me. A lot of times they have the new exploits that come out. So there are a bunch of places, normal CTF, sign up for CTFs and play. I learn something new every time I do a CTF. These are all great things to continue fine tuning your trade craft of a pen tester. Sounds good. With that said, though, I think that's pretty much it for our roadmap. Mike, did you want to shout out any of your stuff? Yeah, so I have a YouTube channel now as well. I finally broke down and said, I'll do this. So check me out. It's at Infosec Wizard. Just a callback to something we were talking about on the podcast. We also have the C-Suite Cyber Podcast with our friend AJ on that. And uh, one last thing, at Tandem Cyber Solutions, that's my company, my pen test company. We have an independent sales rep program there. If people are interested in getting some experience in the sales arena for that, we teach all all the things about a pen test and they get in or start interact in that realm in college or wherever there's no hard crazy requirements as we train you a good place to get some early on experience in your career for sure all right sounds good and also i'll leave all the links of all the trainings and all the certifications that we talked about throughout this entire video in the video description down below so make sure you guys check that out also go ahead and drop a like on the video if you guys enjoyed it and found it valuable with that being said guys thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.